Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. We're gonna do a quick update video on Emulation Station for Android. I made a video about this last week, the app had just released, and we did a full setup guide for it, but things have changed. Essentially what's happened is it's been taken off the Amazon App Store, which is where I directed people to get it, and now it's been pushed over to Patreon for various reasons. So we're gonna talk about those reasons in this video, and I'm also gonna help you with the transition if you did get it from Amazon, how to get your money back, and how to reinstall it if you'd like. Either way, I think this is actually going to be a good thing in the long run, and so we'll talk about all that stuff here in this video. Without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, to start, yes, the app has been removed from the Amazon App Store. They call it delisting or suppressing, and they gave the reasoning to the app developer. I'm going to read it off right here. It says, the app facilitates emulating and pirating of games from third-party sources without explicit authorization from those sources. Now, I'm not really sure what that specifically means in terms of Emulation Station. After all, this is an app that is a front end, so it doesn't come with any emulators, it doesn't come with any games, but it does, you know, facilitates the whole experience and the fact that it is a front end, so it kind of wraps all that stuff together. Now, that being said, it's very ironic because, you know, Amazon has listed on their app store a bunch of emulators. You can get the PSP emulator directly on there, RetroArch, things like that. And so it is weird that an emulator app itself can be on there no problem, but the one that facilitates just using that emulator app is an issue. And so I'm not really sure what's going on with that. In addition, since making my previous video and Emulation Station coming out, there have been like a dozen copycat Emulation Station apps just showing up on Amazon. These are like, you know, clones of the app or they they're just pirated copies or they're scams, like trying to get you to buy their app and then not notice that it's not the real thing. Those are all still up there on the Amazon store, but Emulation Station DE, which is the one that I recommended from the last video, the actual original app is no longer there. So it's just really kind of funky that this is happening. And of course, we don't really know why this is happening. Now, the ironic thing here is that Emulation Station on the Amazon App Store was really just a stopgap in the sense that he really wants to get it on the Google Play Store. That's going to be where most of the Android users are going to be, and it's a lot easier process once you have it up and running. The problem is that they couldn't get the permissions to actually have it on that store either. And there's a lot of things that basically requires an elevated level of app permissions in order to access all the emulators and configurations. And so because of that, it requires a human to actually review it. And, you know, the Google Play Store is mostly automated and he kept getting rejected. And so at some point he put it on the Amazon App Store just as an alternative. Now things are just kind of crazy because he's still waiting on that appeal or a submission process for the Google App Store. But then at the same time, now the Amazon App Store is causing all these issues. So taking all that into context, the developer decided to just release it on its own. No DRM or any of that kind of stuff and just put it directly onto their Patreon page. Now, I know a lot of people are probably hesitant about the idea of Patreon. After all, this is a monthly subscription kind of payment thing, but the app developer has thought that through as well. So essentially all you have to do is just pay for that one month and then from then on, you will get all future updates. You'll get an email basically saying, hey, there's a new update. Even if you're no longer an active member or like paying to their Patreon, you'll still get those emails. As an example, I used to be a patron for their former Patreon page and they shut it down when they started the Amazon App Store because they didn't want multiple streams of revenue. Now, I got an email this morning that said, hey, because you were a previous backer of the uh, Emulation Station app on Patreon, here is the link for that. And so even though I was a previous member in the fact that I wasn't actually actively paying for it, I still got the email for the app. And that's what's going to happen too for you. So you just sign up for their Patreon and then you can cancel it immediately. It'll give you an option. It'll say, do you want to remain being a member as opposed to just like being paid? And so as a result of that, you will get those emails from then on. And it's going to be turned on by default. So all you really have to do is just pay that one time, which I think is $5.50. And then after that, you will get the free app from then on. So it's really like paying for the Amazon app that one-time purchase. It's just through Patreon, which the app developer can actually control. Now, if you already ordered it on the Amazon app store, you're probably wondering about, well, heck, I already paid for it. So why do I have to pay for it again? So there's two things going on here. Number one, the app developer has not received any money from Amazon at all. You know, they do like a monthly payment thing. And so that month hasn't happened yet. And because they delisted it, I don't expect them to actually get any of that money that they made from from having it on the Amazon App Store. So what you can do is actually go in as a customer and request to go into the, like the support chat, request to talk to a person, and then from there, just give them the order number and say, hey, I'd like a refund for this because it's no longer available on the App Store. And they'll cancel it and then they'll give you that refund right then and there. So if you want your money back from Amazon, that's how you do it. There's no button to press on, unfortunately, to get your money back. You have to go to the customer service part, but because it's no longer listed, it's a pretty easy transaction. From what I've read, people who have been asking about it have gotten 
their money back within like two or three minutes. And this is kind of a silver lining because getting it running through the Amazon App Store was kind of a pain in the butt in the first place. You had to go through a browser and then download the Amazon App Store and then from there sign in and then download that app. Now you don't have to do any of that stuff. You just have to sign up for that Patreon one time. You'll get that APK and then from that on you'll actually get a notification from Emulation Station when there's a new update available. Now it's pretty early morning here in Hawaii and I want to get this video out as soon as possible, but I did actually go through the process of uninstalling it from the App Store and then installing it myself from my Patreon link. So what I did here is I basically just went into the Emulation Station app on my Android device and then I uninstalled it just the same way you would uninstall any other app. From there I also uninstalled the Amazon App Store. Then I took my downloaded APK that I had got from that Patreon link, and I put it on my SD card, and then I put it on my Odin 2. From there, I just went into my file browser, found that app, then tapped on it, and then it asked me to install it. Once I installed it, I had to go through the initial setup process again in terms of at least pointing to my folders. Because I had already scraped all my box art and put all my ROMs in the correct folder, it really was just a matter of pointing it to the correct folders that I had already made. Once I had done that, Emulation Station started right up. There were a couple little things I had had to do like turning off the input settings so that I didn't see the on-screen controls and then also all the themes had disappeared. So I had to go into the theme downloader and re-download those but that only took a moment. After that everything else was working. So my scrape box art was good, all my app associations were correct, so I was able to just get up and running in the matter of maybe two or three minutes. Now for everybody else going forward who's going to grab the APK from the Patreon link, it's going to be a very straightforward process and I still recommend that video I made last week. You just don't have to pay attention to the whole Amazon App Store part. But after that, the whole setup process is going to be exactly the same. So I'd recommend checking out that video and of course I'll have it linked down below. In the end, I'm not really sure if this app is ever going to get approved or go onto the Google Play Store, so the Patreon link might be the best way of going about it. But I do like the fact that there isn't a bunch of workarounds to get it up and running. You don't have to go through the Amazon App Store anymore. So I do appreciate that little thing. And I think the fact that you can either just pay that one time to the Patreon link for that app developer, or you can keep paying if you would like. All those are really great ways to support this developer and his work. He's been working on this thing for like four years at this point, and so I really like the idea that he does have a mechanism to be able to pay him for all that time. Now the other big elephant in the room is that Nintendo just dropped a big lawsuit on Yuzu, and this is the emulator app that most people use to play Nintendo Switch games. Now I am not super qualified to talk about this, I'm not a lawyer after all, but I am a member of the Nerd Nest podcast, so I think it's a good time to plug that podcast. I'm on there every week, and it's about an hour to two hours long. It's a whole panel of people, and I'm one of them. And we talk about things like this. And so I suspect that in our next episode, we're going to do a deep dive with Nintendo and Yuzu emulation. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link to that podcast down below. It's kind of ironic because the episode we released this week was talking about how great emulation is and how it keeps winning. Then all of a sudden, we've got these two major events that happened this week, the Yuzu thing and and then also the emulation station being pulled from the Amazon App Store. So we'll talk about those things in that future episode as well, but I wanted to get this video out here just to show you how to get it up and running if you already installed Emulation Station, and to show that it's not the end of the world, it's really just a matter of signing up for their Patreon for that one time, and then you can use this app. And the reason why I'm making this video is because I love this front end. I've been using it all week, basically since I first installed it, and I keep using it more and more, and I keep liking it more and more. And so I do think there's a bright future for Emulation Station on Android, which is is why I'm trying to give it so much attention right now because it's a really great experience for me. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Are you using Emulation Station or do you prefer Daijisho or any other sort of front end? Let me know in the comments down below and I'm always happy to hear about that kind of stuff. Also, what do you think about the Nintendo and Yuzu stuff? I'd love to read about that as well. Kind of gets me prepped for this coming episode of the Nerd Nest Podcast. Anyway, thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.